Hey everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be cleaning and really tidying up my large pergola over here because this is really my dining, my outdoor dining area. And it has been my workshop for all winter. It's been my workshop for all, just about all spring. So it's time for me to tidy it up. So here is what I'm looking at. And as you can see, it's got wood in here. It's got, you know, bone meal. I have tie, garden ties. I, I still have this plastic that I'm going to be cutting at some point for my garden shed. But I just have a big mess here. And then down below, it's kind of been my garage storage. So it needs a lot of cleaning to to get rid of. I've got a lot of residual plants that I need to do for a project. But yeah, this is this is a mess for sure. And it's been kind of shown in some of my videos, but it is what it is. You know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do to work around uh, projects. So that's what's in for today, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and get started because it is pretty hot out here. And hopefully the sun is not going to be too much in our way. This was once my banana tree, but I didn't make it through the winter. So I'll be planting something else, maybe another one. in there as much as I'm going to okay so that's all done I've got plenty of dirt to start with with great amendments in it so I'm gonna go ahead and place it over there for now until I clean this up I'll figure out what to plant in here and then we'll put this back together everything pretty much cleaned up over in this area but I also noticed that the walls are really dirty so if I'm gonna clean this and actually tidy it up I think it's a really good idea to just wash down the walls as well because they're pretty dusty from the winter months so that's what I'm going to do and if you notice I have different glasses and I have a whole different outfit and the reason for that was because I had to quit filming when I started this because, uh, as, you know, just life got in the way, you know. But the good news is that my grandson is now a licensed driver at 16. Oh my gosh, he is growing up so much. Ah, babies, they grow up so fast. Anyway, this is a, a lot more work than I was hoping it would be, but I did have quite a bit of crap in there from doing my garden shed so now all that is picked up put in the garage and put in its appropriate places the walls definitely need some cleaning so I'm going to do that and I'm going to also sand 
this table because I haven't found that table that I really, really want, which is a round table. So until that happens, I'm going to go ahead and just sand this down and put a uh, oil base, wood base on it and uh, call it good. And then put all my chairs and put everything back into place. And I'm gonna put some great music for you because you probably don't wanna hear the pressure washer for a few minutes. <laughs> I think I really spoil my animals way too much, but it is what it is. Oh. Let's see what kind of trouble I can get into when doing this. That's going to squirt too, but hopefully not quite as bad. sand this down put the chairs down I couldn't leave things well off alone I had to take this one step further because I've had this area this little garden spot here that I really have never done anything with and so today I'm going to plant some coleus some hostas and some pokeress in there and uh, then I'm going to plant this in that cage over there and then at the very top I went and got a lady fern uh, I think that's going to look really beautiful up there. I may put it in a little prettier vase down the road, but for now I think I'm going to keep it like that and uh, see what happens. I may, I may switch it up a little bit. We'll see what happens and you'll see that at the end. Okay. <music> Okay, you guys, it's the next day, and I wanted to wait because I heard that it was going to rain, and it is raining, and I just thought this was the best opportunity to show you what the large pergola looks like now that it is completely done, especially under the rain, because now you can see how much rain actually goes in there, and how much rain actually waters my plants that I did at the very last minute and I absolutely love it. I think you guys are going to love it too. So it was a really good plan and I'm really excited that I did it. I kind of, I kind of chosen a better time to do this. So let me turn the camera around and do the big reveal. There you go, you guys. Doesn't that look fantastic? This has been a long time coming and I did notice that I didn't fix that up there so don't pay attention to that don't focus on that 
Of course, now that I point it out, you probably will. But I will fix that. But uh, I put a rug down here. This is new, and I absolutely love it. I initially bought a black and white rug, and for the life of me, I can't find it. So I ended up, when I went to go purchase the plants for here and in the cage, I found this one, and it just tied in perfectly because it has just a hint of yellow. And I don't know how well you can see that on film, but it is gorgeous and then turn it around more blackish to white in the back but i just absolutely love it now i didn't put cushions on the chairs i will save that for another time i did end up sanding both of the side chairs because they were pretty yucky and i will over time maybe even paint them black or just give them a good varnish and then the table the table turned out beautiful now this table we actually put together. I went and found a guy that had slabs of, of timber like this. And so I wanted the raw finish, but then that kind of fell off and it really wasn't as pretty as I had imagined this to be. So when I sanded it, I sanded it all down and it just looks beautiful. And I kind of rounded off the corners and the sides and then just really cleaned it up. And it isn't perfectly square. Uh, triangled but that's okay it just gives it a lot of interest but I just absolutely love it so these were the succulents that I had on top of my table initially and so right over here and I'm gonna butcher the name so I'm just gonna put it down for you but it's a Shaviria and then I have right over here I have a Casula and then I have a chocolate soldier which is absolutely gorgeous and then on this other side right here, I have a jade plant. So I just thought this was a beautiful arrangement for a tabletop. So that's what I ended up doing with those succulents. So let's go to the plants, you guys. This is the most exciting thing because this the tree has been here forever and I don't even know what kind it is at this, but I'm always cutting it back right when it's starting to really gain some foliage and going to probably throw out these uh, little red berries on it. But I have been wanting to do something here and I just couldn't figure out what it is that I wanted to do and it just hit me when I started putting this together. And so I couldn't help myself but to run to the nearest nursery, grab some plants, and it just kind of manifested itself. So let me go from left to right. So I'm going to start right here and then work my way here and then to the back and then over in that direction. So right off the bat, we have Hasta Capitan, and that's K-A-B-I-T-A-N, Capitan. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the leaf structure on this. I love that they're very pointy and just so uh, intentional. And then in the inside, and even the leaves have just a hint of red, but look at the stems on this. They have red in it. So it just really ties this whole thing together. I absolutely love that. And that one there is actually going to get a 12 by 16 maximum growth so it's gonna fill a good portion and cascade over this whole area which is beautiful and then over here oh my gosh look at how this coral bows and they even have a little bit of flowers growing on them but these are absolutely gorgeous i i just fell in love with them and these ones are called peach flambini and I just absolutely think it's a very stunning color. And then over here, I have Hosta Lemon Lime. Look at how tiny. Now, this one's kind of a smaller version of uh, Hosta, but look at how tiny these leaves are. And this one will grow probably about 12 by 12. And... It's already coming into flowers. It's going to have some lavender uh, flowers, and it's just gorgeous. Then over here, I have planted four coleuses, and those are called Main Street 
La Rumpala. And I'm probably crucifying that name. So I will be putting it on the screen. But I absolutely love them. And these, I think, are going to get about 12 inches in height. And then right next to it is a flamethrower. And that's also another coleus. And that one there is absolutely gorgeous. And the true name of it is Flamethrower Serrano. And you might already be familiar with these coleuses, but I just thought that the texture of having these spiky leaves with the chartreuse was beautiful next to all the hostas. And then you have the larger uh, leaves with pinks and purples that really go great with the coral bells. And then I had one, one cedium left, and I don't recall the name, but I had one left, and so rather than trying to stuff it in that other container, I put it in here. We'll see what happens. And then back here, let me go around the other way. This hosta here is called Hosta Spartacus. And isn't this gorgeous? I fell in love with it because of the wavy texture of these leaves. I mean, it just really makes a statement. And I just... I just absolutely love this. Now, this one will get about probably 18 to 36 inches in diameter, but hostas are very slow growing. So it's okay that it gets big because even though I may not be able to plant coleuses in the future, this will still fill up really beautiful and overlap each other. And I'll still have my hookeras here and if I want to replace those to do some fountain grass or add some little plants in between, I can do that. So, and this area here gets a lot of bright filtered light. So it's going to be perfect for this because it's not going to get uh, direct sunlight to burn the hostas. And they're just well protected and even in the winter months. Now the only drawback to this whole ensemble right over here is that I do have a drain pipe here. So we will see how my hostas do after this season. Because even though when I built this, I, I actually built this about a foot down and then added a lot of gravel. Um, still, we'll see how these work out because the coral bells are very drought tolerant. They don't like a lot, they don't like their feet wet at all, and they, they're the least amount of watering plant that I know of, besides a cactus. But they're pretty darn close to that. But hostas, they like water, but they're not, they don't want to be drowning in it either. So we'll see. Uh, for the most part, this area is pretty dry, but we'll find out. It is raining, so we'll see how wet it gets. And it, big reason why it's wet is because I did water really well yesterday. So let me move on. And then over here, this one here, I absolutely, absolutely love this. Look at how, how much it looks like a hosta. Look at the leaves and the leaf structure. This reminds me of the Maravirigata hosta that I have over underneath my Japanese maple tree. This one is is absolutely gorgeous. Now this is actually a shrub and it, if you were to plant it on the ground, it likes to have moist soil, but they don't want to be standing in water. So if you add some mulch around the top of it and you give it one good drink of water, that'll retain that moisture that it needs. So it's perfect and you can water it once a week thereafter, but it's just going to be beautiful. Now this one will get in maturity, almost 24 by 24. It could be 18 to 24. I guess it just depends on its environment and where it's at. But uh, this one is zoned from seven to nine, but the cold hardiness is zero to 10 degrees. So it's, it's a pretty tough plant and it's new for me. But I just fell in love with it. I just, I, I just thought that this was gorgeous. Now, I'd never seen this plant before, but it's supposed to have these little fairy bells. 
and that's why it's probably called a moonlight Chinese fairy bells because it has these little white fairy bells of flowers on it. And I have seen some pictures and researching it, and it does look like it. they're kind of cute. So we'll see. I will keep you guys updated on that. And then right next to it, this container. This container is not new. I've had it in here for three years, and that's just more star jasmine. This one is a little slower growing because it gets more filtered light and not as much direct light. So it does stunt its growth a little bit. But nevertheless, it will climb up the post. And then over here, rather than having a Boston fern, because Boston ferns are very finicky, they're very, uh, they need constant watering. And so I didn't want to go that route. And also they shed a lot. This one here is called a Victoria Lady Fern. And I just absolutely fell in love with the foliage. And it's really soft too. It's not harsh or anything. And each individual stem on it is just this beautiful stem. And then it has like this little furly ends. And I just thought it was gorgeous. And this one is actually a perennial. So you can plant this in the ground. It does like shade. But underneath this filtered light, it's going to do perfect. And then I added this tray here so I can bottom, bottom water. However, I will be uh, tying this into a drip system so that they get plenty of water if I'm on vacation or something. And then I've got my beautiful Lysomachia. This one, once it starts blooming, it's going to be gorgeous. Now this likes a little bit more uh, shade than, or it performs, let me put it this way, it performs better when it is in deep shade in comparison to when it is in more direct light or filtered light like we got. But it's still going to grow this beautiful yellow flowers and it's just going to look stunning. Now this is perfect plant for a container because of the way it cascades down. And then over here I have another flaming serrano and I just thought having that attic color was just gorgeous to have because it complements the Lysimachia. And although I should paint this uh, cage, I really do like the rustic black and rust, you know, contrast. So. It just ties things in, and sometimes you just don't want to mess with uh, the natural antiquing of uh, something old. While I'm here, I will show you what the flower looks on the Lysimachia, if you are not familiar. Now, this one got very dusty <laughs> from all the sanding I did, but look at how beautiful these flowers are. This is what I'm talking about. It's just this beautiful cluster of flowers. And I absolutely love this plant because of its color and its grace, and it's just beautiful. And now you can see my other star jasmine. I do have a clematis. It's not the same clematis that I have on the other one, but you can kind of see the clematis here. And this one's a very tiny clematis, and I don't know the name of it because when I planted it, I lost the tags. It's still a really pretty clematis, and it does fine. And then, of course, my garden. You guys have all seen this more than once. And it's doing fine. Been getting a lot of uh, salads out of it. And you may have noticed one empty spot. And that's really where I should have planted that succulent. Didn't think of that until just now. But uh, I think it was uh, Italian cilantro didn't do very well in that side. But everything else seems to be doing good. My beets are still beating along. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah so that there you go you guys that's what it looks like and i couldn't be more pleased hey you guys that's gonna do it for me thank you so much for watching thank you so much for your love and support and most of all you guys get up get out get active build yourself a beautiful eating area in your place or a sitting area or something just gorgeous in your backyard that you can actually just sit out and enjoy your garden. Okay. Mm, love you. I'll see you guys next time. Let me give you the walkabout.